welcome. I, I'm Chi from Called Out Living and I have a, a business that uh, I create and sell printables and planners around self-care, goal setting, dreaming big um, and planning, especially leaning towards people who have businesses or want to start businesses. So I'm just going to talk through one of the exercises I've got in my life planner and um, it's one that there's lots of variations of it and I call it fight your fears and or fear setting um, but Timothy Fer Ferris calls it fear setting I used to do it before and I had a different name but it's basically helping you look at your fears and assess them and kind of put some thought to them to help you really put them in their correct place where it's usually a fear that's not going to happen it's not a real fear um and sometimes they are things that could happen so it helps you to uh figure out ways to avoid it or ways to sort things out and i think it's just like it's a great one especially if you have anxiety like i i do have anxiety and i work through um with things like personal growth and things like that rather than medication i just felt like for me that was the best course but obviously it's not for everyone but i do think that w whether you you have medication or not it's always great to also work on your mindset and your mind and your your thought patterns and how you perceive things so i'm gonna so i've got my printables printed out and bound you can print yours out and put them into a folder or a binder or you might have them loose or you might want to print them out and put them into like a happy planner or a different kind of planner so it's fight your fears so i'm just going to talk through the exercise okay so we you know we can let these fears and worries stop us from doing what we really want in life our thoughts can just go into overdrive running wild and our thoughts just can kill our dreams before we even get started. Just you think, oh, I'd like to do this. And then straight away, but this could happen. This might happen. I'm worried about that. And we can just let that actually stop us from even taking action. So while it's great to like have these big dreams and make plans, we still have to make steps forward. And it's often it's often the fear and the anxiety and the worries that can you kind of make a step forward and then that hits you and then you get stuck and then you, you kind of stop and you give up so the way that you we goal set you can also fear set so it's kind of a, a dealing with these fears before they become something more okay so what you do and you can just do this on a piece of paper is you write down the situation or the decision that you're facing and then you consider what is the worst thing that could happen so I you know if you're like me often my brain wants to just go to that worst thing situation scenario straight away so a new something happens and it's like yeah okay that's the worst thing that could happen oh that's probably gonna happen and then I have to stop myself, I have to like rewind, I have to bring it back in, give myself a talking to. Uh, but that, that can be some of us. So what's the worst thing that could happen? And then it's like, what case, and what are you scared about in that situation? Because usually, because it all boils down to fear, it all boils down to being afraid of something. So, um, for instance, you've got to do a presentation at work and you're really worried and the worst thing that can happen is that you mess up everything you're saying it's a complete mess no one knows what you're on about and everyone your boss is like that's terrible you know and then you get fired so this is like the worst situation so what are you really scared of so it might be there's a few things that you could be scared of in a situation like that you're scared of looking silly you're scared of looking like you don't know your stuff, like you don't know your job very well, you don't know your topic, your subject. So you're worried about what other people think. You're worried that other people think less of you. And then your ultimate biggest fear in that situation is that you could be fired because of this really bad presentation. So then it's like, let's be proactive. 
what can I do to prevent it? So what, what steps could you make, can you take now to prevent this worst case scenario happening? So it would be taking time to thoroughly research and write out your presentation to practice it, to get like super familiar with it so you know it off by heart. Um, maybe even go through that presentation with a colleague that you trust and get their feedback. So those are some steps that you can take. And now moving on to the next page. So, so you've gone to the worst case scenario and you've created this whole storyline in your brain of what's going to happen. So now it's, let's look at this logically and let's think about what's more likely to happen. So you're worried that you're going to completely mess this presentation up by you're going to, it's all going to be wrong. No one's going to understand it. And you're going to get fired. Okay. How likely is that to happen? How likely is it? How realistic is it that you're going to get fired because you messed up on the presentation? And I'm assuming that you've been doing this job while you're probably actually good at it and you just maybe don't have confidence in yourself, but you're probably good at your job. So why they've asked you to do a presentation? Because to be honest, if they thought you were really terrible, didn't know it yourself, was going to mess it up, you probably wouldn't even be asked. So just think about it, things like that way. Like, okay, I've been asked. That means they must actually have some trust in me. I must have some level of um, knowledge that they see in me. So number one, that's more likely like a more likely scenario. It's like they actually believe in you and they believe in you for a reason. So number one, that you probably can do a good presentation. That's more likely that you are going to do a good presentation. Um, it's more likely that even if you mess up, it might just be like a few sentences and you can correct yourself. Um, a more likely situation is that even if you mess up and you correct yourself, other people won't even really care. They won't really be like hung up on it because they've probably made mistakes as well. And they'll probably be rooting for you thinking, you know, when you sort it out and you explain it, thinking, oh great, I'm glad they managed to like, you know, make their point. Um, it's not likely that you will be fired. Uh, yeah, so if you just think about it, you're not likely to be fired for making a mistake in a presentation. Okay, so now you're gonna go into the scenario of the worst case happened. It really went wrong. So you have messed it up, everyone's laughing, and then you have this big talk and you're like in serious trouble with, at work. So how can you fix it? Um, so maybe it's thinking, okay, where did I go wrong? How did that talk go so wrong that that happened? And then it's being proactive and going, coming up with some ideas that you talk through with your manager of ways you can prove. Perhaps it was, uh, um, you know, you got a bit anxious and it was more like fear that got a hold of you and you, you know, you couldn't remember what you were saying. So maybe you could be proactive and go, oh, I'd like to go on this training course for giving presentations. Or um, if, you know, if, if, if people are laughing, it's like, how do you fix that? Well, you just sort of have, have a laugh with them and don't take it too seriously. And within a week or so, people forget and move on. And if you are in that such a situation where you end up, you know, doing a get fired, which is very unlikely, then consider it that do you do you want to do you want to work at a place where people cannot even make a sim cannot make a mistake that they end up losing a job because of a small mistake do you want to work somewhere that's so like uptight and pressured in that way and maybe you can actually go find a job where people you know they let you make mistakes they let you try things and grow and you know fail and grow through that failure so that's that can be a way you could fix it okay so moving on to the second from last uh, so what could actually be the best thing that happens so you've gone down that path of everything goes wrong and how you could prevent it and then if it happens how you can fix it now you're considering what is the act what's the best thing that could happen now which is a great question because that's hopefully gonna kind of get you excited and like up for it 
So the best thing that could happen is you give an amazing presentation. Everyone loves it. Everyone thinks it's really good. You get loads of like praise from your colleagues. The manager like comes up to you and like saying, "Oh, well done. It was so great." You know, I want to give you more responsibility. I want to, you know, see you being promoted into this position because you really proved yourself. So that's the best situation that could come out of it. So then just focus on that. <laughs> so you get a chance to like work through like your worst case, but then come to your best case because it can go either way. And it's actually probably more likely that things go well, you do a good job and your best case happens. And then lastly, you know, if you're worrying about this thing, it, it, it might happen, it might not even ever happen, but say it's something like that, you are given a presentation, it's something that's definitely gonna happen. Okay, you give the presentation afterwards, you come back to the exercise and then you review it and what actually ended up ha happening in the situation. So how did it actually go for real in real life? Not in your brain, not in like your mind's world, but how did it actually go in real life? And then what have you learned through it? Because maybe it's helped you to learn how to write presentations. Maybe it's taught you to really practice. Perhaps it's taught you to actually believe in yourself more because it goes really well. And you're kind of like, oh, what was I worrying about? It was actually pretty easy. Like it wasn't a big deal. And then you can, it builds confidence because you realize actually it wasn't even as bad as I thought. It actually was good. It went well. And it can help you, you know, build that confidence in yourself. So. What did you learn? You learned that actually. I know a lot more than I think. Um, I learned that I can give a good presentation. I learned some new skills of, you know, writing presentation and putting it together. So there's lots of things that come out of it. So you can then tailor this exercise to, you know, whatever situation that you're facing, you're worrying about, or it might be a decision. So it might not even be something you are definitely going to be doing. It could be a decision like, do I do this or do I do that? And then you can work through thinking about that decision you're facing. What's the worst thing that could happen if you make that decision? What are you really scared of in making that decision? What's the thing that you fear? How can you prevent that thing from happening? If you make that decision and this is what you worry about, how can you prevent it? How likely is it for this but the worst case scenario to happen? And what's a more likely thing to happen? And then if your worst case did happen, how could you fix it? How could you solve it? How could you make make it right, get the most out of it? And then what's the best thing that could happen from your decision? And then finally, if you make the decision, you walk through it, how did the decision go? How What was the situation that came out of you making the decision? And what did you learn? So I, I you know, it really helps me um, when I felt, when I first sort of learned the exercise, I would always do, like do it on paper. And then now I could, there's times when a thought comes into my mind and I can just kind of like run through it in my brain. Um, and kind of, I know like, okay, I'm running it through. Like how likely is it to happen? What's what am I really worried about? What's my, what's really my fear in this? How can I fix it if it all goes wrong? And what could actually go right? What could be the best situation? Um, and then there's some things which are kind of bigger things so I will write it down as well. So I hope that helped you. Fight Your Fears it's called and it's in the Life Planner printable um, and that's my Etsy store etsy.com forward slash call, uh, shop forward slash called out living but you can just do it on a piece of paper it doesn't you know doesn't make a difference either way but I hope it's helpful to you. And I would love to know if you give it a try and how you find it. Thanks for watching today. And if you like to know more, you can go to my website, calledoutliving.com. You can find me on Instagram at calledoutliving or Facebook, um, Twitter, but I'm not on there much. So I'd say Instagram number one, Facebook number two. And if you want, you can drop me an email at hi at calledoutliving.com. You can subscribe to the channel. I would love you to like and leave a comment and that would be helpful. Thank you, thanks for watching. Bye.